we know that the only report that matters is the report of the Lord. And so I've been warring for her all weekend, and I've had my my prayer warriors warring for her all weekend. And we've been going in for a time to get there, but they got there. And I talked to him yesterday, and this is his baby sister. His So, you know, it's kind of rough for him. And her circumstances are similar to my mom's circumstances when she passed away. And so it's just this whole big old thing. And I talked to him yesterday, and he said, hallelujah, Jesus. He said, well, they warmed her up, and they got her temperature back up. And she's breathing at 14% on her own. And I think it's more the machine just says that. And they're going to wean her off the paralysis medicine because they paralyze you to give you the ventilator. And... Then she's going to start breathing on her own more, and then they're going to wean her off the ventilator, and, and I think everything is going to be okay. I'll let you know more in the morning when we go, and I haven't heard her yet, but you know how it goes. The news of death travels on for when they said she was dead, and she wasn't breathing on her own, and there was no sign of life. Even the fact that she's breathing at 14% of her own and they're going to wean her off the medicine and they're going to wean her off the ventilator. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, oh God, because during the waiting, I continue to pray. I continue to praise. I continue to witness. I continue to read your word. I continue to stand on faith that even if the situation doesn't turn out the way that we, her family, want it to, we know that you're still able. We know that you're still mighty. So we honor you today, oh God, because no matter what the situation looks like, no matter what we feel like, you never make mistakes. It's always going to work together for the good of us because we love you. It's always going to work in alignment with your will because that's who you are and that's what you've said. The support that I get when I walk out of here today, I know that I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. And the fact that I'm nobody but a pile of dirt, he chose to love me enough to make it all work out for my good. And then I'll give him praise for that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, you're mighty and you're worthy. Oh, God, we ask, oh, God, that you continue to allow your spirit to rain down on us, oh, God. We ask, oh, God, that you bless the woman of God, oh, God, as she comes and she gives us what you gave her, oh, God. We know that you'll be glorified in the end, oh, God. Everybody come to lift up the name of the Lord on today. Ah, there's a sweet presence in this place. Come on, help us worship him because he's worthy. Come on, if you're able today, could you rest upon your feet and begin to lift up your hands unto the Lord? Oh, because he's so worthy, he's so worthy, worthy. Lord, hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far for your glory. Hey! I would do anything just to see. I would do anything just to see you. To behold you as my King. Oh, divine Lord. 
Let me worship you. Find favor in your sight. Lord, please, Lord, please. Come on, come and worship him. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. If you do anything, lift your voices. Lift your voices and worship him. Hey! I want to be where you are. Hey! Lift your voice say, I want to be. I want to be where you are. I want Worship him. Oh, come on and worship Jesus. If you want to be where he is, joy is where he is, peace is where he is, love is where he is, all my help is where God is. Joy of 
Come on, lift those hands. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how. Come on, help me say. This, this is, is how, how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battles. This is how. This is how. This is how I fight. This is how. Lift your voice and wave your hands and fight your battle. Clap your hands and fight that battle. This is how I fight. This is how. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. Put those hands up. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight. 
You don't got to put it by yourself. Hey! You don't got to put it by yourself. Oh, this is how I fight my battle. I wave my hand so I fight it. I stop my feet and I fight it. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Look at your neighbor say, this is how. This is how you fight your battle. This is how we fight a battle. Oh. I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my battle. And this is how I find my battle. This is how I fight. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I fight my battles. Yes, this is how I fight my battles. When the enemy comes in like a flood, yes, this is how I fight my battles. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God, you lift up a standard against him, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. No matter the test, no matter the trials, Lord God, we'll fight our battle in prayer. We'll fight our battles in fasting. We'll fight our battles in seeking your face, Lord God. Because we know the enemy wants to wear us out. He wants to sift us like wheat. But if he can't take our praise, if he can't take our worship, he has nothing. So, Lord, no matter what goes on, we'll continue to fight. We'll continue to press. No matter the attacks, no matter the trials, we'll continue to push. Because we fight our battles with you, God. Hallelujah. We welcome you to Bethesda Temple, Southeast Campus, hallelujah, a place where God is, a place where this is how we fight our battles, hallelujah. We ask that you greet each other in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I got joy in my soul, God is in control, I got Satan on my trail, and I'm singing all is well, he's attacking every day. But you can't stop my praise No matter the attack I won't go back This means war This means means war I got joy in my soul God is in control I got Satan on my trail But I'm singing all is well He's attacking every day But I'm watching while I pray No matter the attack I won't turn back This means war Come on if you determine war Oh, this means war 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 
You can't help my family. You can't help my family. You can't help my increase. You can't help my increase. You can't help my breakthrough. You can't have my breakthrough. I say you can't help my. You can't help my. You can't. You can't. You cannot plead. I plead. I plead. Come on, say. I 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If God is worthy, go ahead and give him a head clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. God is worthy. He is worthy. And he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just a few announcements for this Sunday afternoon. As a reminder, we do have prayer call every Monday at 5.30 a.m. And every Thursday at 10.30 p.m. So if you would like to plug in with us, please reach out to us. We'll give you the phone number so you can get plugged in on those calls. Also on Tuesday mornings, our sisters, we have a Connect Zoom prayer in the morning at 5.30 a.m. So any sisters in the house, please reach out to Lady Valerie. She'll give you the Zoom link and get you plugged in. Hallelujah. And on Wednesdays, our men do get together for their Zoom prayer call at 8 o'clock p.m. So please reach out to Elder Nehemiah if you would like to get plugged in. And our teens, if you have any teenagers that would like to get plugged in, please reach out to Sister Kim Campbell. They have their prayer call every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. And today concludes our renewed 2022 conference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has definitely met us over the weekend. We're grateful for the souls that have been saved and restored for the soul that was baptized hallelujah we praise god for that hallelujah god is still doing miracles hallelujah he's still healing and he's still saving so we thank you we we appreciate the lord for all that he is doing in jesus name amen praise lord everybody on. This is a great day. Everybody say, this is the day the Lord has made, right? Someone said, we will rejoice and be what? Be glad. And it's, it's a great time to be in the house. Elder Nehemiah, hey, he's saying hard today. He is, somebody give that brother a towel and hey, he gave God his all. Come us clap it up for the praise team that, that helped lead us into the presence of the Lord. You know, this was a this has been a phenomenal weekend uh, with, with Renew, Renew 22, y'all. This has been great. And so uh, it's going to be a great time, a great word that is going to come forth even right now. But before we do that, because we don't want to do this at the end, we just want to go ahead and um, allow, uh, allow us to partner in our giving. I don't want to do this at the end. And so um, as I tell all of our visitors in uh, 95 point eight percent of us give online <laughs> all right so um that's how we do but if perhaps you have a uh, an offering you want to give you want to help and support the work of the ministry we greatly appreciate everyone that partners with us to help us uh push forth uh kingdom ministry right and so uh we bless the lord for you all if you're perhaps you're giving online and those that are online um you see three ways to give that is through paypal our Give La Fly, that's the Temple Southeast Campus, our Cash App, that is dollar sign BT Southeast, all right? And so, amen. And y'all, let's clap it up for uh, my brother Josh up here with the nice suck look. <laughs> he embracing his, his calling and his role, and, and I appreciate the Lord raising up leadership, amen. And so, Y'all, we are moving forward, and God is, God is being glorified. And so, if we all stand really quickly, amen. Babies, you know your assignment, your task, give a dollar, all right? You make us parents spend dollars. We go to Walmart and Family Dollar. Y'all, y'all put like six, seven dollars worth of snacks and junk in the basket, right? So, put back one of them little bags of candy and junk and and give a dollar to Jesus. Make sure you always have something to give to the Lord. All right? So um, let's go ahead and do this quickly because uh, we love a cheer. God loves a cheerful giver. We're not begging and pumping and priming. All right? You want to be blessed, you're a partner. And so uh, this is definitely good ground, and God is being glorified here. So uh, we bless the Lord for that. If you would, I'll go ahead and bless the offering that can come around. Amen. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this time. We thank you for this service. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, God, uh, for this renewed conference. We thank you, God, for the word that is uh, going to come forth in just a moment. We pray right now, God, that you will be glorified, oh God, in the offerings that are sown, oh God, into the furtherance of the ministry, God, that you will bless it, give us wisdom, God, to impact our city, impact our nation, God. Oh, God, as we partner in global ministries and in, in different areas that we partner with and so, God, we pray that your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You can come around. 
Amen. Unless you babies, y'all got cash app now too? <laughs> all right. I know some of them do. I know some of them do. It's all good. It's all good. You go ahead. You go ahead. Come around. You can come. You can come. I know. I told y'all we all do. We all do digital. <laughs> and it's all good. It's all good. Get the babies. Come on, babies. Bring your dollars. We want you to be blessed. We're going to have to bring some, some dollars sometimes so the baby's going to be like, man, we don't ever see no grown-ups give, but we give online. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. God bless you all. I know I did kind of step in. You got some more? Yeah, let's go ahead and stand to our feet as we go ahead and bring forth the word. Y'all like my, uh, my, my, war, my war fit on today? Look. I got my war fit on, all right. Uh, my son, see, he always want to size me up. He always praying that he get taller than me, and he always praying that, you know. And so, I, yeah, go ahead, son. Keep on praying that you get tall, and then your feet keep getting bigger, all right? Because I don't have to buy any more shoes. I just go in his closet and get some shoes. <laughs> you know, I'm just clowning with him, but, you know, it's all good. You know, he, he, helped my, he helped my outfit today, but, you know, we got our war fit on, but, but this is how we really fight our battles, all right? We're lifting up our hands, trusting in the Lord with all of our hearts, not leaning to our own understanding. Everybody say, in all of our ways, in all of our ways, we are acknowledging him and, and we're trusting that God's going to do his part. His part is he will direct our paths, y'all. That's something to shout about. That's something even right now to clap our hands and, and, and celebrate the Lord of his, his promises, y'all. He never falls short of his promise. He said, he said, I'll destroy heaven and earth before I allow one tittle or, 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 or tot of my word to fail. This is how confident he is in his word. And so at this time, we're going to bring forth, y'all, this is a man. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let me quit playing with y'all. <laughs> I don't want to distract her as she brings forth the word. But this is Lady Valerie, y'all. This is the love of my life. Amen. And so she is going to come and minister a word. She's been fasting and praying and crying out to the Lord and, and, and making me uh, stay away from her and so she can concentrate all week. Amen. And, and so uh, it was about, and what was that? Uh, was that June? When God gave you this, it was June. We were doing my morning show with my podcast, and, and she got on there with me. Amen. And, and we began to just flow in the Holy Ghost and, and just uh, minister on our Get Up show. And, and God began to give her the theme for this conference. It was during that time we were sitting outside in Ohio, and the Lord said, the, the, the warring is worth the wait. And she began to say that, and it began to bless our, um, our podcast on that morning. And, and so she ran with it. And, and this conference is, is going great because of vision that God has given her. So let's go ahead and clap our hands and celebrate Lady Valerie as she comes up, ministers the word of the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that, y'all. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. We, we twin in the day. We need to take a picture. I'll wait till after you get done preaching. All right. Preach the word. Everybody say, preach the word, Lady Valerie. Amen. Now let's give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. The author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. The only, only, only one that can win every battle. Hallelujah. The alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. My God, he fights for me. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah. My God, he fights for me. My God, he fights for me. 
My God, he fights for me. My God, he fights for me. My God, he fights for me. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. My God, he fights for me. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. My God, he fights for me. 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 Hallelujah. If we could grab our Bibles, we're going to go to Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 31 through 32. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't take this assignment lightly. We're in Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 31 through 32. Praise the Lord, Facebook, and all that are watching. Hallelujah. May, the God, may God bless you real good. Hallelujah. On today, we thank you for tuning in. Y'all, I'm ready to fight. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to tell you, I've been blessed, hallelujah. Every speaker that has came before me has truly blessed me, hallelujah. As Pastor Derek was getting his, his fit, he was talking about yesterday, as he wanted to support, y'all, these boots, they was just sitting there looking at me. And I was like, you're right, Jesus, we're going to war. So I'm going to tell y'all, I got my war clothes on. I'm not intimidated by your bathroom breaks. I'm not going to be intimidated by your cell phones. I'm not going to be intimidated if you whisper to your partner next to you, hallelujah, because I know that the word that I have, hallelujah, God said that this means war, hallelujah, and you might get a little uncomfortable. So let me tell you beforehand, I love you with the love of God. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't stand up here and give you the truth. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we come to you right now, Father. God, because there is no, no. We praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 31 through 32 reads, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Turn to your neighbor, say, if God be for us, who can be against us? I want you to go over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Verse 17 through 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll wait. It's important that we get an understanding. Ephesians, the fourth chapter verse 17 through 14 this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to the work of uncleanliness with greediness, 
that ye put off converse, concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, and that ye put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy words. You may have a seat. How many times have you been up late at night wrestling in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul? If you be honest, it's many times. If we be honest, for some of us in the room, it was last night. It is in these moments where those of us who have been saved, those of us who have been raised in church, we know that we're drawn to prayer. So we'll wrestle for a little bit and... Usually we'll get down on our knees and hope that we pray and we're off to sleep we go. But there are those times that we continue to wrestle even after going to God in prayer. We wake up and we look for God to move. And he, when he doesn't move on our time, we become disappointed. I'm talking to those who have prayed for someone and when they woke up, nothing changed. I'm talking to those who may have been in true deliverance, needing, in need of true deliverance, and not just a praise break. But the deliverance didn't happen in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh service. Hallelujah. I'm talking about those that it, whatever it was, took longer than you expected. I'm talking today about the war between you and your flesh. Look at somebody and say, today we're talking about fighting the who that could be you. Fighting the who that could be you. If our God is for us, who could stand against us? The who could be you. This disappointment and this dismay sometimes leads us to apathy and numbness. To no feelings at all. See, if we be honest with ourselves, the biggest war that we fight, it is ourself. We'll say, oh, my job, they're getting on my nerves. Oh, my marriage. Oh, my church. Oh, my kids. My unsaved loved one. But the truth of the matter is the only one that is in all of those relationships, just go on and tap yourself and say, it's me. It's me. The only consistent person in all those relationships is you. So what you're fighting is your response to all of the above. You're fighting you. If we don't learn how to fight these past feelings, as it says in Ephesians, these feelings of lasciviousness, that's of lust, of unrestrained sexual behavior, these feelings of, and it says, uncleanliness with self, with greediness. That means if we don't learn to fight our dirtiness of ourself, and the former conversations of the old man, then you become apathetic to walking in holiness. Somebody say, that's dangerous ground. You begin to resort to what God brought you out of instead of what God is taking you to. But the word of God says to be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Is anybody made up in their mind that they will do whatever it takes to war against themselves? Hallelujah. So they can go on and see what the end is going to be. Lord, help me fight these feelings. The warring is worth the wait. It is at these times of war where you feel cloudy. You feel confused, and you just want to give up. We want to give up because it seems easy. See, what we don't understand is when we talk about fighting, we talk about warring, we talk about wrestling, a war is a violent confrontation. It's a violent struggle, and it's a series of battles. It's not easy. It's not patty cake. When you're warring and you're fighting against your own flesh and everything else that is trying to block, hinder, or to keep you from God is spoken and to keep you bound, it takes more. 
But many times, instead of girding ourselves up with the armor of God and getting ready to fight, we spend too much time asking, Lord, why do I have to fight? The truth of the matter is, if you're not fighting against something, you're giving in to something. So this means if you're not surrendering to God, if you're not fighting your flesh so that you can surrender to him, then you're surrendering to everything else around you, which leads you down to a path of idol worship. We already understand that we can't serve two masters. So if we don't want to war against our flesh, we'll be serving the enemy. The warring is worth the wait. The reason is, as believers, as a whole, why we cannot do the work of the kingdom is that we are too caught up in our past feelings and our former conversations of the old man. But the word tells us that we are new creatures. Let me tell you something. Let me help you out. New creatures talk new. They walk new. They commit new. Everything is new, 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 new. Where are my new creatures at? Listen, in this fight, you got to be ready to kill. You got to be ready to mortify the deeds of your flesh, your old man, your carnal nature. We got to know the difference between being committed to the kingdom and being committed to your flesh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to know the difference between putting God first just to check a box than to making him the center of everything we do. We got another difference in knowing scripture versus hiding it in our heart. There are many that know scripture, but they also ignore scripture. You can't fight yourself ignoring scripture. Why? Because as it said in the verse, we are blinded. For some reason, we can see everything and everybody else, but we can't see ourselves. That's why we have to war against ourselves. We're too busy trying to fight the people and the spirits and everybody else when we can't even fight our own flesh. Hallelujah. We got another difference between witnessing and inviting someone to church. And the Lord was really dealing with me about this. Because when we are witness, we're holding a banner that we are a soldier. So when we're witnessing, it is intentional. It's more than, come fellowship at my church at BTSC. We have service at 2 p.m. That's okay. That's great. But when I'm witnessing, I'm telling you about the love of God. I'm telling you about how he can take something so messed up, so broken, and put it back together to be pure and holy. When I'm witnessing, I'm walking this walk out with you. It goes beyond my invitation for you to come to my faith assembly. It goes more toward building the kingdom of God. But in order to witness, you got to war against your flesh because that means you got to make yourself available to others. Help, Lord. It means you might have to cancel your dinner date. It means your vacation may have to be delayed. It means you got to be willing to give up everything and anything to do the work of the Lord at any time. You got a war against your own flesh. And so as I was praying and, and God just dropped this testimony on me this morning, I began to think about different times that I've had to war against my flesh. And so I remember when we first got saved, um, how at first we would go to church, we would go home, eat dinner, family time, yay, woo, woo, woo. And then Pastor Derek, y'all know he was running for Jesus, honey, he'll leave you at home if you weren't ready, he was going to be on time. When God said go, let's go. So I would have to hurry up and get ready. We started staying for afternoon service. Then we started going to Bible class. Then you look up, I was in the choir. So you was at church on Monday for young people. Y'all heard the story. Tuesday or Wednesday for Bible class, depending on what season. Then we was back on Thursday for choir rehearsal. And then we're back at church on Sunday. Well, as our kids started to get older and many know that they're active, they started playing sports. And so now you have these games and these practices, right? You go to work all day. You're taking them to games and practices. You know, you, you, go, you got to go. I didn't think they was going to fall on a Tuesday. Or it might just happen on a Thursday. 
We did make a decision very early that they weren't going to play on a Sunday, right? So that they would learn that Sundays belong to Jesus. So I remember as the months would go and all of our kids would play basketball, you know, that's the winter months and it's dark at 630. So you're leaving home when it's dark. You come home when it's dark. And at the time, the assembly that we belonged to was 45 minutes away, 40 minutes, depending on traffic from our house. And so as we jumped into this sports mom, sports dad role and Pastor Derek was working second shift. I would be responsible for taking the kids back and forth. So anybody, all my mamas know, that means when you get off of work, you got to cook dinner, you got to get homework done, you got to pick up from practice, you got to go here, go there. It's Tuesday night. You got to be at Bible class. Okay? Pastor Derek be like, I'll meet y'all there. I got the kids when you get to church. Just get to church. And I remember one day sitting in the car crying. And I was like, God, I cannot continue to do this. Why? Because I'm tired. I've been up since 530. God, I'm giving you my best. I prayed. I fasted today. I did this. I did that. Make sure the kids had something to eat. Make sure everybody was clean. Wipe your armpits so you don't stink in front of the saints. We're going to Bible class. And I remember pulling up one um, Tuesday. And we walked in and sat in the back. Because you know them basketball games, you can't predict. Sometimes they go into overtime, triple overtime. And Bishop was saying, well, praise the Lord, let's stand so we can pray. Tears. I'm like, God, I did all that, and I pressed to your house, and I did all this, because I really wanted to go home, right? But I had to war against my own flesh. Right? Because at times it's going to take more of a press. Right? So what I had to learn to do was go to God and say, God, now, how am I supposed to do all of this? Right? How do you want me to move so that I can serve you too, raise my children, and do what I have to do? And God began to release strategy. Why are you trying to go home and make a full four-course dinner? You better pack some sandwiches, give them some sandwiches, let's go, and let's go through. You got a war. You got a war. You got a war. You got a fight. You got to fight. You got to fight. Why are you worried about how tired you are? Why don't you go to me and say, God, give me strength? All we got to do is ask them. But instead, we want to give in. Turn our car around and go take a nap. Say, help us, Jesus. The warring is worth the wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says in the verse in Ephesians, That he is ready to give us all things. It says to freely give us all things. But we have to walk upright before him in true holiness. And so I was thinking, um, my dad, a memory with my dad came to my mind. And I was going to have this illustration, but I didn't get it all together like Elder Nehemiah. You know, you have all his stuff up here. So y'all going to have to visualize with me. It was a few years ago that we went on our a family trip, a family reunion. I have not traveled with my dad since I've been grown. This was the first time. I don't even remember why Pastor Derek was gone or couldn't go. Y'all, this man still uses an atlas. A map. He will still use a map to this day. He do not trust the GPS. So we driving, and he goes in the gas station, and I already know where this is going, and I'm like, Dad, you know, I got the GPS. I can help navigate it for you. Now that he was like, I don't trust them GPSs. They always get you lost. He's fussing. So we go on along our road. He has the he has the map out and he's going. And I can tell we're going the wrong way because as quiet as it's kept, my GPS was on, but the volume was down, so he couldn't hear. And so I'm like, Dad, have you checked the map? Yeah, girl, I know what I'm doing. I've been living all these years. I know which way I'm going. Okay, so then I'm like, Dad, we should be in St. Louis by now. We, we should be there. We should be there. And so he looks, he's like, it looked like they, they, they might have updated these roads. I didn't say nothing. But that memory came to my mind because when we're going to talk about, as, as we're warring, as we're going through a war, and it talks about putting on, um, 
giving away the former conversations of the old man. When we look at a map, we look at an atlas, it is from an old time, right? Like they needed directions back then, and so the map makers had to make the maps. Even if you go, this atlas, this map that he had, it had a date on it. This was created at this date. What does that mean? Anything after that day is what? Expired. It is former. You can't use it on this present journey, right? Because you are become new, a new creature. If we put it in this perspective, right, you got to get rid of the former things because it's expired. It's not doing you any good. Some of us are trying to war with things that our parents have told us, that our grandparents have told us, and, and we're fighting a new fight. Hallelujah. We're trying to fight a spiritual battle against ourselves with carnality. It's outdated. It's outdated. So then I began to get visions of other navigation devices. And when we were cleaning out my other car, we found um, a TomTom Tom GPS navigation system that was in the middle. We had got it, I think, on the Black Friday. And so I'm like, okay, God, why did that memory come to, come to mind? Well, even the TomTom Tom maps, the ones that are not connected, listen, to a satellite or not connected to a source, have to be plugged into something to be updated, right? They have to be downloaded. So if you never update it, right, you're using a former map. So even if you're not the atlas using the former things that you knew, to fight the wrong way, maybe you're a Tom Tom. Instead of saying connected to what's updated, you gotta go all the way back, get plugged in, get downloaded into, and hope that you got enough storage or memory for the new maps. We gotta put away our former things. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But then I thought about that cell phone GPS that my daddy don't like. It is forever connected to a satellite. Hallelujah. It is forever connected to a battery because most cars, they got your charging station, right? It updates in minutes. And even when it gets offline, when you get to an area where it can reach the satellite, it'll say rerouting. Rerouting, rerouting, it'll also let you know if it's offline. It'll say ding, 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 offline. That's how we got to be as we walk this journey, as we war against our flesh. We got to know that we're connected to the satellite. We're connected to the source. But the good thing about our Wi-Fi, the Holy Ghost, it never has a weak signal. So as long as you stay connected to the source, if you step out, it's going to say rerouting, rerouting. Come on, daughter. Come on, son. Fight against that flesh. Come on. You don't got to go there. I already brought you out of that. You don't got to say that because I'm already fighting for you. You don't got to do that because I'm going to provide for you. The other beautiful thing about that cell phone GPS that the Atlas don't have and that TomTom Tom don't have is it anticipated the road before you. Hallelujah. If the road was updated, it took you a different way. If the road was closed down, it told you to go a different way. If there's a traffic jam or an accident, it tells you to be red. It even tells you to beware of a speed trap. See, that's the problem. Some of us are trying to accelerate, but we're not connecting or listening to the source. You can't accelerate if you don't have the word. You can't accelerate if you're not fasting. You can't accelerate if you're not warring against your flesh. If it's always about you, you're not going to Somebody say, Lord, help me to fight the who that could be me. Lord, am I the who? Fighting these past feelings literally causes you to have to flex against yourself. What does that mean to flex? Right? My son been lifting weights, you know, he growing into a young man. He always around the house, flexing, do anything, washing the dishes, flexing. Whatever it is, he flexing. 
Y'all pray for me. I'm in all boy house now. Then it turns into Pastor Derek feeling like it's a challenge. Here we go. Everybody flexing. But when you flex, you got to stand up and rebuke the thoughts, the habits, the pattern, and anything that causes you to be too numb to fight. Hallelujah. You got to ask God for the wisdom from above and how he wants you to walk with him. Lord, help me how to complete this assignment. Lord, teach me how to build your kingdom. He's already written your story, but the story requires you to fight for the new life that you have in Christ Jesus. You have to fight to want to be kept. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Hallelujah. You got to fight. You got to fight. In Ecclesiastes 5, 1 and 2, it says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear, touch your ear and say hear, than to give up sacrifice of fools. Some of us are giving up empty praise. Some of us are giving up empty worship because we don't listen. It says, for they consider not they that do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. Touch your mouth. Our mouth gets us in a whole lot of trouble. Hallelujah. Let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. In a true war, soldiers don't do a lot of talking. They plan, they strategize, then they fight. Don't waste your time speaking to the enemy. Spend your time fighting on your knees. We must be hungry. We must sacrifice. We must change our identity. We must be separate. We must be in proximity to God. We must war. We must wait. Why? Because it's worth it. It's worth it. I love my husband, but Jesus is the only one that is going to freely give me all things. So why wouldn't I war and I fight to be where he is? We all were in praise service. I got to be where you are. I got to be where you are. But why when life hits us, you want to be everywhere, but then where God is. I heard Pastor Derek say this on the phone to somebody, and it blessed me. We will let people run us out of church. We will let people run us out of fellowship. We will talk about how people gossip and how people have treated us. But the same thing happens at the club. And you pay to get in there. They're going to talk about you, fight you, throw stuff at you, put you out, get you locked up. But you're there every week. We got to fight to be kept. We have to war to be kept. Remember, God did not leave you fighting any war alone. It says he does not leave us and he does not forsake us. Saints, we got to remember, we are blessed because we're fighting a fixed fight. I don't think y'all got it. We are fighting a fixed fight. Hallelujah. There are times and places where I have had to take a stand and I walk into the room with a different authority. Why? Because in prayer, God told me something. And so when I walk in that room, I know that everyone else has the agenda already planned out. But God gives strategy. He gives strategy. I don't know if you all remember during COVID-19 when um, jobs were forcing the COVID vaccination and, and they were doing all this different thing. You had to get letters from your pastor and you had to get all that. And you know, y'all, I tried to be quiet. I did. But the next thing I know, I ended up in, in an office. It's all right. But before the meeting, God gave me a word. He said, when you go before them, you say this, I'm not coming to you to fight. I'm coming to you to gain your ear. And so they were ready for me to fight. There were all kind of papers on the table. And I just came in, I said, good morning. Good morning. I said, well, I'm not here to argue with you or to fight. I'm just here to get your ear. This is what I believe. And this is why I don't plan on doing this, this, that, that, this, this, and this. And then they were like, well, you didn't, you didn't have to do all that. 
we're not going to force anybody to take the shot. But that's not what was written. Hallelujah. But when you learn to war against your flesh, because my flesh wanted to be like, y'all ain't going to tell me what to do. I ain't sticking that in my, I wanted to go on and on and on and on. But when you wait and let God download the strategy and don't entertain the enemy, right, he will go before you and then there will be peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. And that word mount up begin to stick out to me. That word means to arise. So wait. As I'm waiting, God, you're renewing my strength. As I'm waiting, God, I'm mounting up. Oh, Lord. As I'm waiting, God, you're going to keep me from falling. As I'm waiting, God, you're going to keep me from fainting. That's what happens when you wait. But many times, we don't want to talk about warring. Because we don't even want to engage in it. We are tired before you even mention the word war. Facts. We're fine praying for somebody else. You get that phone card, that text message, sister, can you pray, sister? You're like, yeah, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Like, you ready. You ready to war for somebody else. Oh, but when it knocks on your door, you don't want no parts of war. Oh, Jesus. But you know why? I'm just going to tell y'all. It's because we soft. You know how the older generation, how we sit back and talk about these kids. I work at a school. I talk about them all the time. They soft. They don't know how to do nothing. We do everything for them. They smart, but they soft. They can make straight A's and don't know how to hit up a hot pocket in the microwave if you don't tell them. Same thing about us. We're used to things being easy. That's why we don't want a war. But that's also why the world is in the condition that it is now. Yes, it says that the the world is going to wax colder and colder. Yes, we know that there are signs of things that are going to come. But we also have an assignment to do. But we're too busy being soft, falling out like the world, than we are warring against our flesh, going out and telling people about Jesus. There is no reason why in your sphere of influence that people should not be getting saved every day. It's because we don't have the faith to war even against our own flesh. Hallelujah. So what is the message? Wait on the Lord and be in good courage because it's worth it. As you wait on the Lord and you wait in good courage, he's going to strengthen you. And then what happens? The war is won by the only only, only one that conquered death, hell, and the grave. This is what happens when you wait. When you wait on the Lord and you be of good courage, you will understand, as the mothers used to say, Mama Miller, the Holy Ghost is a teacher. He will teach you what to do. He will teach you what not to do. He will tell you how much of your flesh still needs to die. Come on, somebody. Somebody that been saved longer than a minute knows that some of those tests and trials hit you and some stuff start coming up that you thought was buried. But the Holy Ghost will teach you how to war. He will teach you how to battle. I want everybody to stand and go to Psalms 121. Psalms 121 reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth me, he will not slumber. Come on, someone. The general of our army never goes to sleep. 
Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is the keeper. The Lord is thy shade. What does shade do? Shade protects you from the sun. He is our shade. So even in the midst of the battle, even when it seems like things are flying over you, even when it seems like you're about to get hit, he is going to have you under the shade upon his right hand. It says the sun shall now smite you by day or the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee. He will keep you. Come on. He will keep you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even more forever. Our general continues to fight forever. The warring is worth the wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's worth it to fight your flesh. It's worth it. It's worth it. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Come on, somebody. The Lord is going to help you fight. This is how you, pa- you fight past these feelings of apathy. You pass fi- past these feelings of numbness. How you don't return to what God has already seen you through. Is that once you make the decision to keep his commandments, once you make the decision to line up with his word, everything else is going to fall into place. It may seem like once you make that decision and once you repent and you're baptized and you're filled with the Holy Ghost that everything is falling apart. But what he's trying to do is to equip you for the war that has to happen. Just like the U.S. Army doesn't send soldiers out to war without boot camp, you got to go through that boot camp experience. That's how you learn And from what I've heard, boot camp is real. Hallelujah. You got to change your diet. You may have to cut your hair. You may have to wear the same uniform. You got to go through all these drills, sometimes, some untimed. It's real. But the men that choose and sign up to serve, they go through this because they want to serve in the army. Why is it when it's time to serve in the army of the Lord? We're okay with wearing the badge saying I'm a Christian, but we don't want to go through boot camp. Why is it okay we want to say, yes, I believe in God. Yes, God is, he's the head of my life. But we don't want to truly serve him because we don't want to follow his manual that he left for us. Hallelujah. With every hand lifted and after every eye closed, I want you to begin to think about, as you think about fighting your flesh and your, you think about fighting yourself, what are those things that you need to overcome? The things that you want to stop just sweeping under the rug. The things that you want to stop just ignoring. What are those things that it's time to war against? It's time to fight against? It's time to deal with? And when you have that on your mind, as our altar workers come, if you feel led, I want you to come to a prayer partner and let them pray for you. If you're like, I'm a little uncomfortable, I'm not sure what they're going to do, or hey, I'm not with that knocking me to the floor, I don't know what they're going to do, I want you just to stand, because we're going to pray all together. And I want you to lift your hands. And I just want you to begin to call on the name that is above every name. That name is Jesus. 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 Do you know that God loved you so much that he, he sent himself, 
in the form of his son, wrapped himself in flesh so that he could come and he could take on the burdens of all of humanity at the cross. He's the only one that's going to love us with an everlasting love. So give that burden to him. Come on. God already told me there's some things that need to be killed in this room. Hallelujah. There's some things that need to be killed in this room. Somebody is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Somebody has tried fighting with everything that they already knew. But today I want to introduce you to a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has our power to heal. He has our power to deliver. Hallelujah. And maybe you're saying, Sister Valerie, I don't know how to do this on my own. I never even opened my Bible. I'm telling you, God will walk you through it. He will walk you through it. But you got to take the first step. You got to repent. That is a change of mind, a change of heart. God, I'm truly sorry for everything that I've done, God, that I might not even have read yet. But God, I feel the conviction. And I want to give it over to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is moving. 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 Come on. I give myself We're praying at the altar. Hallelujah. And maybe you believe that you have repented. Maybe you believe that, that you've told them you're truly sorry. But you're ready to walk new. Hallelujah. That requires being baptized in the name of Jesus. In the remission, for the remission of your sins. Why is it important to apply the name? Because it's the name that paid the price. Hallelujah. There are some that baptize in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But the difference is, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, but I can't go to the bank and cash my check in mother. I can't cash it in sister. I can't cash it in wife. It has to say Valerie. So when we go down in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, it cancels that debt. We are being dead with him and coming back up, resurrected, clean, and wiped new. And maybe you've repented. Maybe you've been baptized in Jesus' name. But guess what? There's more. He wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Why tongues? Because it shows that he has control over our mouths, which is the most unrighteous. Hallelujah. So if he can take control of our mouths, he can take control of all the rest of us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God is moving. God is moving. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh God, I feel you, oh God. Oh God, I feel you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you haven't opened your mouth yet, begin to call on his name. He's going to do it for you. His presence is here. Hey, Anamoshaya. Kiroshia, Anamoshaya. Woshamaya, Kiroshia, Anamoshaya. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Glorify Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Hezekiah. Is you Jesus glorify your name? Feel my Hallelujah, life Jesus. Till all they see oh God, oh God, oh God. God, I give you all of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, Anamoshaya, Namosia, Namosaya. Come on, something's breaking, something's breaking. Hallelujah, just open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth, but you got to make up your mind. Like I said, you got to war against your flesh to want to be kept. You got to war against your flesh to get more of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you feel? Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hey, Come on, he's a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. Come on, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It may seem grim, it may seem dim, but I'm telling you, he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. He showed himself faithful when I wanted to give up. He gave me strength. Hallelujah to keep going. Hallelujah. When I thought I was having an anxiety attack, but God, hallelujah, he said if I keep my mind stayed on him, he would keep me in perfect peace. But you gotta fight. You gotta fight. You gotta fight. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. What you made of? What you made of? When they see I tell you what you're made of. You're created in the image and the likeness of God. I come against every word curse that was spoken to you. You're not dumb. You're not ugly. You're not what the world says you are. You're not bitter. You're not angry. Hallelujah. You are the apple of his eye. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you are made to serve him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Something's got to break in this room. I don't usually do this. Hallelujah, God is stretching me. I want you to find somebody. Grab their hand. You don't got to move. I don't care if it's the person next to you. I just want you to grab their hand. I don't want you to ask them what's wrong. I don't want you to ask them what they need. I want you just to start praying. We got to stop being in folks' business and just take it to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, in your name, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless you in the name of He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, begin to fight for them. Hallelujah. Begin to fight for them. Begin to fight for them. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, he loves you. Hallelujah, Jesus. He loves you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jordan, you still want the Holy Ghost? You still want the Holy Ghost? You still want the Holy Ghost? Yes or no? You don't know. Forever, we'll worship for. 
forever. We'll worship forever, Lord. And we sing glory to God. Glory to God. stretching me and I want to be obedient I'm not going to say it five times I'm going to say it one time if you are dealing with pressure you just feel pressure you just feel a lot of pressure I want you to come to the altar I said it once young or old pressured on every end you're pressured yeah come on there it is 
You're pressured on every end. There's one. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Because I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray the pressure away. There's two. Hallelujah. Anybody else? If you don't want to come, raise your hand. That's fine. You feel pressure. There's three. There's one more. You feel pressure all around. Raise your pinky if you're real, real scared. That's fine. God's still going to fight for you. God's still going to fight for you. You can raise your big toe. He's still going to fight for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, the giver of life. Hallelujah, God. God, I come to you right now, God. God, because I believe with this prayer, God. Hallelujah, you're going to shake the room. God, I believe with this prayer, God. Hallelujah, you're going to break up everything else that you already didn't come from, God. God, I believe in this prayer, God, that you're going to begin to relieve pressure. Hosaya na Hosaya. God, you're going to begin to relieve the pressure. Who oh, got the pressure to perform to what others think? The pressure that walking with you looks a, a certain way. Yes, there's a standard. Yes, we got to walk in holiness. But God's got to do the process. Hallelujah. God, the pressure of even, I don't have enough, God, and I don't know how ends are going to make it. God, relieve the pressure. Because as the pressure relieves, God, I believe that you're going to begin to bless. I believe that you're not only going to bless physically, but you're going to bless with peace of mind. You're going to bless with joy, unspeakable joy. You're going to bless with self-control. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Shamaya Sierra La Bosa. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few giving a hold to it. Hasayara Boshaya Lara Bosia. Kioro Shayara La Bosa. Who can I Bosha? Even when I can't feel it. I don't know why we didn't learn from Adam and Eve. You can't hide from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't hide from them. Oh. She never stop working. She never stop working. She you never stop working. You never stop working. You never stop working. He is a deliverer. He is a deliverer. I don't know who needs to hear that. He is a deliverer. You can be free from your burden of sin. You can. It doesn't matter what it is. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Never stop working. Even when I can't see you working. You never stop working. You never stop. Never stop working. Hallelujah. That's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you I'm ready to war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm going to get y'all to call on the name of Jesus over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tried to go on. Hallelujah. But you didn't mess around and lift it up your hand. You never stop. You never stop working. No, 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 no. You never stop. You never stop working. No, 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 you never stop, you never stop working. No, 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 you never stop, you never stop working. No, 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 you never stop, you never stop working. Oh, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Oh. Even when I can't see it, you're working. 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 Way make a miracle work. A promise keeper, you are 
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, you are. 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 Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Cause even when I can see it, you work. Yes. Even when I can see it, you work. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Oh, waymaker, yeah. Oh, yes you are, yes you are. Come on, y'all. She's crying yes, out to are, God. Yes you are. And I know that God's gonna fill her with the Holy Ghost. Yes you are. Hallelujah. Yes you are. And I'm not on any rush. Because somebody prayed and somebody yes, labored you with are. me. And if yes, you got to go, you're free to go. Hallelujah. But as long as she calls on the name of Jesus, we're going to be right here with you. Hallelujah. 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 Yep, it is. There it is. Come on. Come on. Come on. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. If we only believe, if we only believe out of your heart shall flow rivers 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 so flow 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 Rivers flow, flow, 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 rivers flow, flow. Is that in your heart shall flow rivers? Out of your heart shall flow rivers. Out of your heart shall flow rivers. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living waters, living waters, living waters, living waters, living waters. waters. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, 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 Out of your heart shall flow rivers. Out of your heart shall flow rivers of living waters. If we only believe, if we only believe, if we only believe. shall renew, renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle and soar. They shall walk, not get weary. 
they shall run and not that's what happens when you wait yes that's what happens when you wait oh that's what happens when you wait oh that's what happens when you wait yes that's what happens when you Just remember God loves you. Just remember God loves you. No matter what to go with.
it's in services like this where we don't dismiss. We just stay in the presence of God. And like I said, if you have to go, you're free to go. You don't have to feel like you can't walk. But if you're still seeking the presence of the Lord, continue to pray. Hallelujah. Jesus. Because you can, I could. 